the boss monster raises its spear to point at the two uninvited guests. As if the gesture was in order, the humongous lizard pet dashed toward the two men with immense killing intent. The giant pet smashed its scaly paws onto the same ground where the two men once stood. Both of them dodged successfully, and guild master Yun Taeyeon propelled himself forward, trying to land an attack on the monster. The creature agilely dodged Taeyeon's incoming attack. It seemed that the monster had a sharp instinct as well as some level of intelligence to steer clear from a powerful attack of its opponent. Taeyeon used the blade of the katana to shield himself from the incoming counterattack of the creature's tail. He was blown a few meters backward, but is unscathed. As he gained a stable footing, he darted forward once more. The owner of the lizard pet joined in the fight, and took Taeyeon's attack directly with its spear. The two metals made a loud clanking sound upon contact. The lizard king and Taeyeon both backed away from each other after the clash of weapons. The monster stood at the back of its pet, as the huge lizard's mouth charged up for a flamethrower attack. It shoots a huge fire blast towards Taeyeon. He was prepared to face the flames head-on using the katana, but before the deadly flames could touch him. A shield manifested itself in front of him, the burst of flames made contact with the shield. It completely defended Taeyeon from the attack. Junso who was behind Taeyeon, was nonchalantly doing an immaculate job as a support. After the pet lizard was finished with its fire attack, it let out an angry roar, as Taeyeon jumped backward to the helper. Aren't you a weapon maker? He asked Junso. Junso told him that a shield could also be a weapon, and had he never tried getting hit by a shield before? Taeyeon smirked, getting more interested in Junso, his katana engulfed in flames again. He said that he would have a lot of questions to ask Junso, after they cleared the dungeon. With that, he bolted forward, leaving Junso standing at the spot. The Lizard King sensed that its opponent was getting close, launched its spear. The tip of the spear detached itself from the spear body, forming a snake-like long chain, with the sharp spear tip heading towards Taeyeon at full speed. He caught the spear chain with the katana, with chain wrapping itself on the katana's blade. The flames of the katana did nothing to the strong chain. The monster pulled its weapon back in full force, dragging Taeyeon along with it. The pet lizard opened its mouth wide open to welcome its prey into it. Stop messing around and fight properly. Junso extended his hand to use his skill. Another katana manifested itself in Taeyeon's free hand. Didn't you tell me to test it out? The guild master smiled playfully, and grabbed the other katana. Hearing Taeyeon's remarks, Junso irritably stated that he should say those things about a pet. Implying that Taeyeon is acting like he is on a personality trial, with a new pet to see if they both vibe with each other or not. The katana that was locked with the chain soon disappeared, as Junso cancelled his skill on that weapon. Taeyeon did a cross slash towards the wide open mouth of the pet lizard in front of him. The Lizard King on its pet was both shocked and confused at the sudden turn of events, while Taeyeon shot his katana upwards, nearly hitting the Lizard King's neck. Using that split second of distraction from the monster, Taeyeon appeared in front of it, and kicked the monster on its chest, causing it to lose its fear. The Lizard King fell on the cold hard ground with a thud. As it was trying to stand back up, Taeyeon leaped high into the air, and activated his fire skill once again. The monster was stunned and stared at Taeyeon, as he unleashed a huge fire blast with a swing of the katana. The attack cost the monster an eye and a limb. In times of desperation, the monster's instinct kicked in to attack a weaker opponent. It spots Junso not far from the area. The wounded lizard king grabbed the spear that landed near it, coincidentally, and ran towards Junso, trying to at least take a life in its last struggle. The spear that was thrusted towards the young man's neck was stopped a few inches away from his neck by a light blue force field. The Lizard King was trembling in desperation to break the invisible shield. Who do you think you are pointing your weapon at? Junso threatened in annoyance and rage. Blue aura seeped into the air, as he glared at the desperate move from the Lizard King. An inflamed Taeyeon came up behind the weakened boss monster. The raging flames emitted from the man, sent the monster trembling from an uncontrollable instinct frenzy. It came to realize that it was the prey all along. Although the morning had become an evening, there were still crowds of reporters, and some onlookers outside the Red Dungeon. Soon, the dungeon began to change from red to blue, indicating that the dungeon had been cleared. Voices from the crowd, about the dungeon opening and the clearing of the error gate filled the venue. The party members soon came out, with their guild master at the front. The reporters immediately began asking questions about the situation inside the dungeon, and the safety of the members, to guild master Yun Taeyan. 
the two people in suits had to block the reporters from getting too close to Taeyeon. He Su came up to her boss and asked if he was hurt anywhere. Taeyeon told her that he was fine. The newbies thanked Taeyeon for rescuing them, and they wouldn't be able to survive without him. At a side, Junso was handing the bags of mana stones to the person in charge, saying that he already received payment as a helper beforehand, and he would take his leave. The man took the bags, and thanked him for a job well done. Junso turned around, not wanting to stay longer, nonchalantly walked away from the crowd. A reporter asked Taeyeon how he managed to clear the dungeon so swiftly, and quickly added that, the dungeon may be too easy for the guild master of the Overkill Guild. No. Rather than me, it was thanks to. Taeyeon turned behind, to look for the helper who contributed as much as he did. But he saw nothing, no trace of the young man anywhere. The reporter continued guessing, was it thanks to the team doing their best to block the monsters, that the guild master could deal with them easily? Yes. That's right. A newbie agreed to the statement. Another newbie said that the situation was so dangerous, because all their weapons got destroyed, and if it wasn't for their guild master, they wouldn't have the chance to be talking here. What are you talking about? Taeyeon grabbed the newbie's shoulders. The stories don't add up to his experiences in the dungeon. He told them that it was thanks to that person making them weapons that they lasted that long. Pardon? That person? The newbie sounded very confused. Taeyeon told him about the support who came in as a helper, and that he was a weapon maker. The newbie could only repeat his last two words in confusion, and turned towards his friend, asking her if the helper they hired had a weapon making ability or not. The girl was also unsure of the said ability. Taeyeon continued to ask the other party members if they saw the helper made weapons or not, and the other members were also very puzzled about the question. They asked if he was talking about the pickaxe. Another person said that they didn't think that the helper even brought a pickaxe, another said that the helper brought a pickaxe, but he must have lost it afterwards, because he did indeed mine all the mana stones. The mental cartwheels of the guild master started running. He couldn't comprehend what was happening, as all of the party members indeed received the weapons made by the helper, but they all had amnesia of all that happened. He started thinking back on what happened. He remembered the condition that Junso requested, when he was creating a new weapon for him, to forget everything regarding his ability. Rental pay. Taeyeon found a skill that fit the situation at hand. However, the skill was exclusive to A rank or higher maker supports. Both of his colleagues asked him what was wrong. Without replying to them, Taeyeon handed his leather case to the buff man, and ran off, as the man shouted his name in shock and bewilderment. Both the buff guy and Hisu were puzzled by their guild master's actions. Taeyeon rushed towards what looked to be a park. He quickly glanced around, thinking about where Junso went to and did he already left. Without any lead to find the young man, Taeyeon stopped his search. Little did he know that Junso was not far from him, and was hiding behind a brick wall. Taeyeon looked towards the distance, he had a lot of information to digest and think about. Like why he was hiding his abilities, and will they get to work together in the future? After a while, he Su and the buff guy came rushing toward him with worried voices. Taeyeon turned towards them, and told he Su that he would like her to find someone. First things first, he wanted to make connections with the mysterious weapon maker. A few days later, he Su brought good news to the Overkill Guild's guild master. She had found Shin Junso's location. She told Taeyeon that around 1 p.m. today, he and four other members entered a deranked dungeon around Sonthagu. Taeyeon thanked her and said that the area wasn't too far away from their location. He Su asked her boss that Junso was just a deranked maker so why is he so interested in a young man? The man leaned on his elbow and looked at the tablet. He asked her if that's what it seemed to her. Judging by Junso's status check, it's no surprise if people think like that. All of the young man's information states that he is a Deerang supporter. Yet, the rental pay skill alone refutes all the information in the data. Rental pay is an A-rank skill where the user can compel a request to the borrower in payment for materializing and lending an object. The scope and obligation of the request depend on the user's skillfulness. The skillfulness of the rental pay used was high, and Taeyeon had never witnessed anyone using it like that. The ability was mostly used to gain fortune, but Junso was only using it to hide identity. Taeyeon looked outside the window wall of his office. He thought that, if Junso wanted to gain fame and fortune with his skills, he could easily achieve that. Well, I'll be able to know his skills and his reasons when I meet him again. He thought, as his gaze was directed to his hand. He recalled the feeling of the weapon he wielded that time, 
he had never felt something like that. That time, he could finally unleash his full potential, without the worry of breaking a weapon. In the past, Taeyan had met with numerous blacksmiths, who were known as the greatest blacksmiths. In his flashback, there was a bulky man with a bushy mustache, much like the dwarfs in fantasies, but perhaps, taller. He showcased a few of his finest swords on the table. Taeyan was told that all of them were of the finest quality, so he randomly picked one. He released his skill, and the flames engulfed the sword. The bright flames cast a fiery glow on the two people, as the blacksmith rubbed his mustache. Taeyan was given the green light to release more of his mana by the blacksmith, he clenched the hilt of the sword a bit tighter, and the blade shone in bright orange. He slashed through, what looked to be a box monster in half. The destructive power was immensely strong, but his expression is mixed with sadness and disappointment. All of the finest quality swords the blacksmith claimed, crumbled from his intense firepower. The blacksmith was astonished, and grabbed his head with both hands. He slumped on the ground, defeated, as Taeyan walked away. Not a single one could fulfill Taeyan's expectations. Normally, the creation abilities of makers are limited to the forms of normal weapons, such as swords, bows, daggers, mace, and so on. However, the weapons created by Junso exceeded the limitations of abilities in forms by a milestone, as he could create any form of weapon he wanted, like a pickaxe or shield. As if the limitations didn't exist in the first place. If it is Shin Junso's abilities, Taeyan is sure that he could use that skill, which he kept sealed, because he didn't have a weapon that could endure it. Taeyan let out a sigh, and thought that an average D-rank dungeon from a five-member party, usually takes around four hours, and there is only an hour left if he wants to go to the dungeon location. He stood up, and asked Hisu about his remaining schedule today. She told him that he would have a meeting with Guild Master Hyunmu at 7 p.m. Walking past her towards the door, Taeyan told her to cancel the meeting, and that he would head towards the said dungeon right now, as he didn't want to risk missing Junso again. Inside the dungeon at Sampago, a goblin fell to the ground shouting its final cry. The finishing blow was dealt by a hunter wearing full body armor. The hunter expressed his shock at the weapons that a certain helper made for them. The weapon must have a C rank or at least a B rank in quality. The hunter predicted. Because the mana within the weapon was capable of destroying the boss monster's weapon like that. During the fight, he thought they were all done for when his weapon broke. However, thanks to the helper who had a weapon maker ability, they were able to survive the boss fight. He loudly complimented the mana filled sword saying that he had never seen a sword of this quality before. He turned behind, and thanked Junso. The young man was carrying his mana stone-filled bag towards another area. He asked if they should recruit him if he doesn't have a guild, the blonde girl beside him expressed her agreement on the idea. He also said, that it's a shame for a talent like Junso to go around as a helper. His teammate also agreed, and he complimented himself, for having a good eye on people. Junso glanced at the party members, lamented that he had used more mana than he expected, because he didn't predict that he would meet a team so weak, that they even struggled in a normal, non-era dungeon. He lowered his gaze towards his palm, and the mana stones in front of him. He thought, that if he had more mana that time, it wouldn't be like this. He thought back to the time during the Crystal Golem fight, after defeating the Golem, he never encountered another dungeon, with a large amount of mana anymore. He curled his fingers into a fist, and opened his palm. He felt that his mana was no better than an average deranked Awakener's mana. But it was lucky, that his lack of mana didn't limit his weapon creations. To think, that my past life's memories could aid me like this. Junso materialized his pickaxe. The basic skill of a maker, creating, helps the user make a specific object. Although it's an instinctive skill, where the quality depends on the mana used. However, there's an unknown method, to aid the execution of the skill. That is the level of understanding. If the user understands, the object that they want to create very well, they will create a higher quality of the object. The best thing about this ability, is that when the quality increases, the efficiency of mana also increases. Thus, even if the user used the same amount of mana to create the same object, based on their level of understanding, they could have a meaningful difference in quality. During his past life, after that method was public, Junso remembered, he underwent numerous ruthless training, such as researching the materials used, receiving training from a hunter as a support, and going to workshops, to learn weapon creation lessons. Regardless, the feeling he had at creating the weapons, was more than he expected. He doesn't know how better his skill got, but compared to the amount of mana used, the level of quality is higher than he first expected. Despite that, the skill is still inadequate. It's tiring to use both his weapon creation, and rental pay in a day. He grabbed the fallen mana stone that he just mined. Looking at the mana stone in his hand, 
there's no way he could afford the expensive equipment that is made from mana stones. At best, he could only afford mana potions, as it's the only thing that is mass-produced and is affordable by him. He put the mana stones inside his bag. Junso opened his status window, and he continued to access his current mana situation. He was contemplating whether to order more mana potions, but his pay as a helper is still a struggle to purchase too much. He did think about being a support, but nobody wants to have a Durang support, so he had no choice but to choose the latter. Despite that, he is satisfied with the results. He tapped at his passive skills progress bar, and muttered that there was around 20% left for it to fully fill his mana absorption skill. He dismissed his system window. He estimated that he would need to clear a few more dungeons, as one dungeon clear computes to only a bit more than 1% of mana. The efficiency is too low. He frowns. To speed up his progress, he needs to enter a rank era dungeon. It is the only way to collect a large amount of mana at once. He did a comparison with other dungeons. Rank era dungeons have several times more mana that he can absorb, and he also did some research on those dungeons. The only issue is that he couldn't predict the difficulty of a rank era dungeon before he entered. His last dungeon would be dangerous, if not for the Overkill's guild master. I would at least need to roughly estimate that the monster will be at least a C-ranked boss and do my preparations. He started to carry the bag to another area. If Junso wants to grow, without changing his low-ranked identity, he will need to check the system rewards after fully filling in the mana gauge of his mana absorption skill. Good work everyone. Let's team up again next time. A party member cheered, and everyone headed their separate ways. Junso observed the members briefly, and confirmed that he erased everyone's memories of his abilities safely. Mr. Shin Junso. His eyes whitened in shock for a moment, but soon regained his composure. He turned towards the source of the voice. Taeyan walked towards him, with Hee Su carefully following him from behind. Do you remember me? Taeyan smiled. Junso flinched slightly, he mentally took note that his rental pay didn't work on the guild master. Will you believe me if I say that I don't recognize you? He sighed in annoyance and scratched the back of his neck. You're right. I won't believe you. With a confident smile, Taeyan took out his business card and gave it to Junso. The young man extended his hand to take the card and asked what business the guild master of Overkill wanted with him. Taeyan said that he had something he wanted to talk about with Junso and to spare him some time to talk. The young man just silently read his newly acquired business card. The Overkill Guild is one of the three top guilds in Korea. Junso cannot involve himself with bigger guilds yet. He wanted to think of an excuse to escape. The young man turned around, told the guild master that he had a prior dinner appointment and had no time to entertain them. Taeyan grabbed his shoulder to stop him and said that he wouldn't regret the conversation that they would have. Taeyan said that he won't occupy too much of his time and he will pay for dinner too. Junso stated that Taeyan's guild master position sure gave him a lot of spare time to just converse with a mere Durang supporter. Junso felt a piercing glare from the red-haired girl beside him. Taeyan casually admitted it with a smile. Junso pondered for a bit, thinking that he also needed to confirm how much his rental pay skill worked on him. He walked past Taeyan and muttered that he could spare little of his time for the conversation. Taeyan let out a smile, stating that that's all he needs.